Hi, I'm Bloodied Porcelain, and I'm playing Lady Nienna, the Ain She Sorceress. What's good, y'all? I'm Grizz, and I'll be playing Phoenix, the Werewolf Craftsman. Hey, I'm Overthinker. I will be playing Irleth, the Elven Assassin. Hi, I'm Stabbykins, and I'll be playing Sigrun, the Dwarven Merchant. Hello, my name is Jimmy, and I'll be playing Oswald, the Witcher. Hello, I'm Solomon, and I will be your Game Master for this evening. When we last left our professionals, they had finished cleaning up after their battle with the cadre of vampires and had been run into by a noble woman and her procession of two knights and several men at arms. Interestingly enough, the noble woman actually turned out to be the sister of Phoenix, our craftsman, and had apparently married into nobility and money. After a bit more conversation with between the family members and the uh, new nobles, the witcher of the uh, Gersahog line, Oswald, made his appearance, revealing himself to, in fact, be what many of the uh, group of professionals believe him to be, the older brother of Brynhilda. You all decided to, tra to travel together after having a meal together and figuring out that the roads are generally very unsafe right now, so safety in numbers would be best. Getting to know each other a little bit more on the road, you settled in for one last night of camping before making your way into the city. Several of you had done your own various uh, tasks around the campsite, Sigrun making sure that the that the uh, men at arms are well stocked in what spirits she had left from her stock and just having a good being good company to them. Irileth and Oswald making sure their skills are staying sharp. The noble lady Gersahog and Nienna getting to know each other once a bit closer in their tent and Phoenix having decided to shed his clothes and embrace his true nature for a little while, a short jaunt as his true form. Only to have smelled the telltale sign of sulfur, of bar guests, uh, that they found out about during their time in Machina Keep. We are going to begin uh, with Phoenix, are you going to let out any noise or are you just booking it back to campsite? Uh, he is. Really funny if I didn't actually, he is actually going to rip out a howl, um, but he's going to plant both feet and literally he's not going to do it upwards like he normally would. He's going to bellow it towards the camp itself as a howl. OK. I will ask for you to go ahead and give me a 1d10 roll. Uh, go mm -hmm. ahead and add your uh, body and uh, physique into this because you're really just bringing it down from as deep into you as possible to make it as loud as possible. And my physique? Oh, OK. Yeah, go ahead. Damn. Sweet. Beep. That's a 29. <laughs> Very nice. He's, he's a chunky boy when he's a werewolf. He sure is. We return to the larger pavilion tent of the noble ladies. Le uh, Lady Gersahog has just been enjoying uh, the tea with Lady Nienna, speaking a bit more about her family, a bit more about the things that she's had to deal with, uh, except at one point she just stops and just turns her head a little bit. Just stopping completely mid-sentence as she was telling a story about how how she met uh, her noble husband. Out of character, I thought we'd already gone to sleep because we ended the last session talking about Demeterium. That's right. My apologies. You were you were settling in for bed, and then you heard uh, you would hear rustling as she uh, stands up from her uh, sleeping area and actually 
you just hear more rustling. Did you hear that? I hear what? And she does not uh, respond. You just hear a flapping of cloth as she leaves the tent. I will get up and follow, I suppose, tugging my, my sleeve down over my bracelet and the rapidly turning red and irritated skin around it. Noted. Uh, are you going to deactivate the bracelet or are you going to keep it active? Um, yeah, I'll probably deactivate it for right now because I don't know what's going on. Noted. Oswald. Yes. Could you please give me a roll of awareness? Sure. And awareness. Get a plus one of that. 20. <laughs> And I need to make a roll. Okay. You are settling in to meditate, to just rest your eyes and but keep your senses open to the world around you as mm -hmm. others have begun to really get to bed. However, after a few more minutes of this meditating, you hear the call of the of the wolf coming from elsewhere and you can feel your pendant buzzing ah shit and i'm i'm immediately going to start getting up and uh i'll pull out the silver sword just to be at the ready and also start going up to other tents and be like something's wrong be prepared all right. Earless, do you think you would have settled in for bed at this point, or were you hanging out more with uh, the other men at arms that were awake and keeping guard? I'd probably have chatted with them for a little while, but after a fight last night and then a day's ride, I want to get up early tomorrow, so... I'm probably like half undressed at this point, working on shedding armor. Okay. What? What's going on? I don't know. It says something happened. Nana, oh, you thought... don't immediately see uh, Lady Yersahog, even though you followed her out of the tent not long after she left. Hmm. Uh, her ladyship certainly slipped off quickly. I was right behind her, but I can't see where she went. Witcher. I will start heading on over to your left. Yes. What's on? You say um, there's a problem? Buckling on his sword belt. I heard a wolf cry, and also my pendant is buzzing really good right now. Oh, gives Nienna a knowing look. Nienna will kind of tilt her head a little bit. Should probably check it out, just in case. And as you are agreeing to check things out, you hear a loud scream that is followed by a tearing and the and a bloody gurgle coming from one of the men at arms tents <laughs> i'm immediately running over <laughs> uh i put a hand on yena and like start running us towards uh the carriage go, okay go 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 the end is running for the carriage i suppose Oswald, you make it to the men-at-arm tent, and you see that uh, one of the men-at-arms has uh, been torn into and is likely in shock, if not dead. If, if he's not dead, he's about to be. Yep. As you can see that there are two 
flame-mouthed, almost wolf-like creatures with skin like stretched across their frame that you immediately know with your Witcher training to be a bar guest. Oh, shit. Um, I am going to immediately try to uh, strike at him. All right. Uh, there are two, so if you want, you can do a, a quick strike to hit uh, each one once, or you can just do, focus on bringing one down. Mm. Give me one second here. Um, yeah, I'm, I will just do a quick two strikes on each uh, on each one. Uh, fast strikes. Uh, yes, that would be fast strikes. No extra actions. This will be my silver sword. Um. Locations. Do I just do random or I'm sorry? Uh, yeah. yeah, it will just be random unless you want to specifically try to aim for. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just immediately just just trying to go for it. OK, no mods. There you go. And 22 in a 33. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll uh, the locations for each of those strikes. OK. How do you do the locations? Oh, target oh, location. Button. Yeah, there's yep. a button underneath uh, that little box. Yep. Oh, yeah, I see it. Sorry. Uh, location right here. There we go. Left, All right. All right, so left limb and right limb on. Go for the left and go for the right, basically. Got it. Uh, go ahead and roll the damage of your silver sword. All right, so that will be remember correctly. That is going to be 46 plus two because this silver works against these guys. If I'm yes, silver correct. is very effective against these because they are specters. Yep. 46 plus two. Uh, that's 17 on one of them. Good start. And the next other one is going to only take 14. OK. And then I would. Yes, and then I am going to. Uh, it's now the end of my turn, if I'm correct. Uh, yes, unless you'd like to spend a stamina point to get another turn of strikes, that will be at a minus three. Uh, I am actually going to instead spend five stamina and make a quick strike at a roll of equal to the opponent's reflex times three. OK, go ahead and uh, make that skill roll for me. All right. Twenty five. That definitely beats it. All right. And I'll make another single uh, I'll make another single strike in that round. Go ahead. Yep. So that will be. What, another fast strike, right? Yep. Yes, it would be another fast strike, but we'll just take the first roll. Yep. Oh, by that means. All right, it's all good. Uh, 29. All right, go ahead and roll the location and damage for that. All right, that's going to be, uh, again, hit one of them in the left. And they will take 19 damage. All right. With the uh, strength of your own bl blows and the speed given to you by your mutations, you are able to just sweep low and take the legs out from underneath the Bargas and then just draw your blade and shove it right through its torso, bringing it low as it just begins to dissolve into the mist and dust of specters. The remaining Bargas... Uh, will finish will like look up from its meal and roar at you flames licking out from its open maw and i would like everyone to go ahead and roll me a uh, reflex for your initiative okay so just roll initiative right yes please okay. all right <laughs> All right, this is going to be at a plus four because I don't want to mess with my screen too much. Oh, 
now, actually. Never mind. There's a mod for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like I'm at 15. Is that right? Did I do it right? You hit the wrong button. There's quick roll buttons on the front of, on the front of your sheet. I did hit the wrong button. Sabby did too. Classic. Oh, it's gonna be on the okay. yeah. It's gonna be on the quick roll buttons there on the right side, underneath uh, the back. There you go. Do we get any bonus or penalty for this being a surprise ish? Uh, Sigrun, rolling a one and have. staying eternally on uh, uh on I was theme. Say it, gets, it gets a negative because uh, they're definitely caught unaware. But uh, a one is is worse than anything I could really give. Listen, listen. Okay, you gotta save the best for last. It's true. No one's doing right. that. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to use some luck to re-roll that if that's all right. I would say that you can use luck to re-roll to re-roll initiative if you, if you so choose. Cool. Seventeen. There we go. And would Sigrun like to reroll as well, or stick with this? Stick with an eight. Let's, let's stick with the eight, so that'll give me time to think. <laughs> Fair enough. What's all the yelling? Goes back to sleep. <laughs> That's so me right now. <laughs> back the howl having warned most of the camp save for one unfortunate soul and you now come back to see that several of the uh, men at arms are coming back in states of being basically half armored but fully armed and you can see that the scent of sulfur has converged here as there are several bar guests no fewer than eight at least that you can see right now that oh. are going charging after the men at arms and the knights and just various individuals. You do see Irolith and Nienna going for the carriage. You do not see Sigrun and you do not see your sister. Okay. So Discord's doing its thing where I didn't hear you actually say my name at first. So that was a wild explanation until the very end. Um yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Um I don't see my sister. Uh... She can take care of herself. I already know that. Um... I'm gonna go... Oh, chomp on some bar guests if that's cool with you. Alrighty. Uh, alright. I'm so happy I programmed all these goddamn buttons. So I'm going to go for some claw attacks on one of those bar guests. Go right ahead. Cool. Uh, 26 and a 24. The 26 will hit and the 24 will also hit. Okay. So going back over to this sheet because it's an absolute nightmare. That is um, 46 plus 2. Uh, 15. It's going to be 13, and I rolled 2d10s for locations. E and 3. I don't have the location sheet in front of me. I'm so sorry. Uh, that looks like the torso and limb, I believe, for monsters. Okay. Um. Right, so that is 15 to one of the limbs, and that's 13 to one of the Barca's torsos. Okay. 
With the ferocity of your strikes, you're able to severely wound this Bargess. It turns and opens its mouth, letting out a deep bellow with the green flames for, that you remember sort of uh, peeking out from it. All right. I'm going to... Is it five stamina for a quick attack or five for uh, a strong you can, attack? You can spend a stamina to get another round of attacks. That will be at a minus three. Okay. And you can keep doing this. But you can keep doing this as long as you have stamina for it, but you will keep incurring greater penalties. Got it. Um, then I'm going to take two more quick attacks into the interior of its mouth and open its drop mouth towards me. It'll boost some stamina. These are going to be at a minus three. Um, so two more brawls. It's going to be at 22. And uh, a fucking one. Are you serious? <laughs> there goes. Uh, the. All right. Did set up these. That the, the first one's gonna be a thirteen, and I miss on the second one. Uh, uh, roll with d10. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Roll the d10, and we'll see. Yep. You might still hit. Who knows? Uh, four. Let's see, with that being brought, brought down to an 18. Unfortunately, that will not hit. But uh, with the damage that you dealt from the first strike, you're able to finish off this Bargas and just your claws get covered in the weird soot left behind by it. Um, what would be the penalty if I go again? Uh, then the next strikes that you do will be at a minus six total. Fuck it. Uh, two more of them. 21. 21. Alrighty. With two, two 21s, one strike will land on the next bar guess that you were able to rush up to, but you are just flailing, not flailing, but swinging wildly. And the second one will uh, move. It will move out of the way of it. And one more claw attack. Uh, for 21 at it. That's a 10. I don't know what that's at. That will be actually be at the head. So we deal double damage and you just rend its head from its torso. All right. That's it for me. All righty. Got to um, very nice. Nice. Next up, Oswald. Yes. <clears throat> um, I still have one dealing in here. Is that correct? Yes, there is current. There is still one in the tent with you. Mm. All right. Um, I am going to go ahead and take swings at it, and then so I'll just take uh, two quick strikes. Uh, there we go, and oof, 32 and 26. All right, uh, it is not able to 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 defend itself from that 32 and the 26. It, it just barely is unable to defend itself from. Go ahead and roll the damage, and I will apply the critical damage as well from it. Oh, OK. Um, OK, uh, don't there we go. So roll. Four D six plus two seventeen for the first one and what's with the critical, might I ask? The critical that makes you deal an extra ten points of damage because of the sheer oh. way that you destroyed his uh defenses. Oh okay, so that's so that's technically twenty seven and eleven. Yep. How is he looking? <laughs> uh, well, not great. Uh, let's see. With that being a hit on the limb, that deals that much more. And that's not it. Uh, could you please roll the target location for the second strike? Oh, yes. Uh, the torso. Then that would just be uh, pure damage. So that it will actually take out the second one as well. 
and you can hear uh, more of a commotion outside. And as you would leave the tent and the poor bastard behind, you see that there are other bar guests that are charging into the camp and your attendant is buzzing wildly. But it's you have dealt with bar guests before. Mm -hmm. They don't usually cause your pendant to shiver this much. Something yeah. else is here. Yeah. I hate to do this to you, Chris. Um, is it also because there's also a werewolf there as well? Could be. You're you're not entirely sure. Your pendant hasn't really had like time to get acclimated to having a werewolf within your yeah. vicinity. So yeah. it could be that. It could be something else. You're not entirely sure. Okay. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. And uh, I'm just going to try to get closer to like a big group of uh, Vargas as well. But as I'm also going to be, be on the lookout. I think this is just the first wave. All righty. You make your way closer to the next group of bar guests. And unfortunately, it is now the bar guests turn. I need to make some rolls. <laughs> 1v1 me, bro. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> you see three of the bar guests just completely just barrel into the men at arms, just <laughs> sweeping them off their feet and going immediately for the throat. Unfortunately, the men at arms with the, despite their training are not used to fighting supernatural threats of with this ferocity and they are not long for this world. Ah, uh, shit. The last uh, three bar guests all seem to surround uh, Sir uh, Verbasham, who is the uh, knight that Phoenix recognized from his time before with his family and they are scratching and clawing at him it, mostly you see to get his attention elsewhere as one final one lets out a gout of flame that just impacts into the armor and you can see it just begin to like almost burn like through like a point like a specific point getting into the armor and blackening it even deeper than the uh, Nilf Guardian paint. Well, that's bad. <laughs> and then after that, it is Nienna and Iroleth. Iroleth uh, can go first. Okay, so we're running, like on the carriage. Let's go. As we reach it, Iroleth. Uh, puts his back against the carriage and laces his fingers to give Nienna a boost. Yeah, I think Nienna would take it. Uh, the high ground's always good for a magic user. It lets me see easier, so. Fantastic. I will say that with uh, the fact you two are helping each other out, you don't really need to make any kind of roll. Uh, it will be dependent on Irolith's role of physique. Did he get a bonus? Because I will say that he gets a plus two because you are working to aid him in in this maneuver. Okay. Oh, please reroll well, that. Yep, there goes another <laughs> point of luck. <laughs> two points of luck to reroll, bud. Yep. Okay, fifteen. Given how small of frame Nina is, a 15 gets her up there. Maybe a little uh, with a little bit of uh, issue because you're a little bit sore from all of the training you did with Oswald and you weren't expecting mm -hmm. to have to heft Nina up onto a carriage in the middle of the night. Nina's also in a nightdress, which has got to make this whole maneuver a little awkward. <laughs> it's a lot of extra fabric to deal with. It's a little awkward for most everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
but you're able to get her up there and you are you turn and can see the battlefield there are now six bar guests three of which are feeding on men at arms that have been brought down and killed almost with ruthless efficiency less feral than you were expecting for things that look like almost like wild hounds with no eye is there a way for me to tell if there's like a spell at play here I would say you can go ahead and give me a roll of uh, magic training. Okay. I also have another thing I wanted to do, and I'm willing to spend stamina to do it. You may uh, posit that possibility at me. Cool. Uh, With Nienna safely out of reach of any nearby jaws, I'm going to run to our cart and retrieve my bow. Okay. I would say that you are able to get there if you go ahead and spend two points of your stamina to just book it. Uh, do I have any mods, Saul? Uh, I will say that you actually go ahead and have a grand total of a plus four to this because Ooh. there's something wrong. So magic is thick in the air here. 28? There is, in fact, magic at play here. There is a lesser spell that has worked to bind these specters here. You you know that it that to do this is bordering on darker magics. It's not quite necromancy, but it's getting really, really close. It's towing the line. But you also can feel that there is a stronger spell that has been uh, brought here that there is almost a gale of of magic centered on this encampment. Someone has brought down a very powerful magic here that is blatantly dark, necromantic in nature. OK. Uh, does that count as an action or can I still do something? I will say you can still do something. You'll just be at a minus two because you're also now dealing with the fact that you can feel the magic almost like tearing at your skin like a strong gust of wind. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, Nana is going to plant her feet on the top of the, um, on the top of the carriage and is going to focus on let's say the bigger spell um okay. and is going to cast a spell and try to get rid of it um okay. i have to spend half as many stamina points as the caster spent to cast the spell and okay. i have to make a spell casting roll that beats their casting roll okay go ahead and do the casting roll i'll let you know right now you need to spend 11 stamina oh that's a big spell okay <clears throat> Yeah, it's a journeyman. All right, cool. Let's see. And I'm going to spend some luck with this, I think. Um, I'll spend... Let's see, four? So it'll come out to a plus two because I'm I'm at no wait a plus four because of my fucking focus. So uh, I spent four, which would negate the negative two and bring me up to a plus two, and then I have another plus two because of my focus. Noted. And oh. I'm gonna spend luck. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm this is a to, bad fight, guys. Down to two luck. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I'll just hit the button again. Oh, head in one swing. I'm doing great. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're doing great. We're winning, I think. 26. 26. Just beats their spellcasting roll. You oh. can feel the magic <laughs> at play here, and it was weaved with great intent and great skill. And you can almost feel the emotion, this deep seated hatred that was used in casting this spell. 
You can't tell where the magic has come from, but you just know that it has been dispersed for the most part. There are there will be no additional effect aside from whatever the initial effect of the spell was. You you have stuck. It was something that they placed and it was going to keep get, causing problems. But as after the initial effect, but you just uh, kept it from causing any additional problems in the future rounds. OK, um, but I don't think with I don't think with magic you can you can do two actions. So that's it. Alrighty. I would spend a little more stamina to get up on the cart with her if possible. Uh, go ahead and give me an athletics roll. Cool. 21. Yeah, you're up there. No problem whatsoever. All right. Fucking ambushes. She looks uh, very focused and there is sweat on her forehead. Cool. The men arms are... Up. The men at arms are trying their best to defend themselves, but again, their weapons are largely steel in nature. M most of them are just bouncing off of the hide of the uh, bar guests that are uh, devouring their associates. The two knights, Knight uh, Weversham, does draw a blade that looks to be silver and manages to bring some pain to the Bargas that hit him with a gout of green flame. The secondary knight that you didn't catch the name of also has worked to aid his associate, also uh, adorned fully in armor. And as a Bargas uh, leaps and atta attacks the knight you did not get the name of, you see uh, Petrilla just slip out from the shadow and drive this long silvered knife into the throat of the Barghest, and you just see her rip the Barghest's throat open and it dissipates into dust. Her nightgown has looks like it has largely been torn and it looks now like it's much more easy to move in. Sigrun. Hello, that's me. Hello. There seems to be a kerfuffle outside of your tent. <sighs> is this happening as Sigrun is sleeping once more? Uh, it sounds like it, it is waking Sigrun up. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say she manages to get her... Um, her jacket on. That's about it as she goes rushing out, just saying, fuck, 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 not again. Ah. <laughs> uh, she'll whistle for render and hop on. Um, which of the uh, lower knights are currently being attacked but still alive? The closest one. Uh, that would probably be uh, Sir Weversham. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, uh, of the guards, I mean. Oh, of the men at arms? Yeah, they they are the Bargas that were attacking and their friends are have turned to now uh, focus on the ones that are swinging ineffectually at them. So you okay. can feel so you can feel free to ride render off to aid them as you see fit. Yeah, uh, she'll go ahead and ride up to the nearest men at arms. Uh, and she will hop off and on or she's going to try to hop off and on to the uh, back of the nearest bar guest. And specifically, she's going to try and uh, close her arm around its jaw to keep it shut. Go in full grapple mode again. What would you like me to roll for that? Uh, let's go ahead and call it brawling. Brawling, hell yeah, all right. That I can do. Where is brawl? There's brawling. There's a brawl. Okay, did that, did that not bring up the prompt? One moment. Because I know I clicked the thingy. Oh, there we go, okay. 
Brawling. Okay. And will this be special move in this case? I will say it would be a special move, yeah. Okay. Can we go unarmed? And target location will be head in this case, yes? Yes. Okay. Thirteen. And I will roll for it. And that's a botch. Oh. Oh. So you just bring your arms around its mouth as it looks like it's about to let out a gout of flame and just clamp it shut. Yep. As, uh, and, and it is trying to like throw like buck and throw you off. Uh, just l lashing its head one way into another, trying to get you off of its back. Uh, as it does so, she's going to actually like angle it up and expose its neck. Renda boy, throat! <laughs> and I will go ahead and uh, roll for Render's attack. Come on, Render. He's able to get a, good, a little bit of damage in. Nothing too intense, given the fact that his teeth are natural and don't have any sort of like silver to added to them. But oh, shit, well, I should give him some silver teeth. That's a great idea. OK. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to hurt the hurt the dog, though, but that's fine. You no, no. Uh, okay. Um, you want know speaking of though, uh, am I able to spend stamina to do extra things? Absolutely. Excellent, because I do have plenty of stamina now. I think about it. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. So real quick, then I'm gonna. Would I be able to? Pull out my. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Was I given silver knuck? Yes, I was given silver knuckles. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and have her uh, put on one of her silver knuckles with her free hand. Uh, she is gonna go ahead and start just punching into this thing's skull. Okay. I will say that the negative for hitting at its head will be reduced to a minus three instead of a minus six because you're already right there. Excellent. Go ahead and make this a strong strike. Do 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 do. Much action. That's the silver knuckles. Head. Okay, uh, heads, heads normally on minus five, I believe. I believe so it's I minus add a six. Minus six. Okay, so I, I add plus three for the uh, the mod. Okay. Another 13. Alrighty. And you just match it, so you get to go ahead and roll damage for it. Oh, hey. Hell yeah, all right. Du -du 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 -du. Oh, did I do that right? Uh, yeah, the damage is correct. And since it, it was a strong strike to the head that is all doubled and then doubled again, so with one single strike, you just bring your hand up and put your silver knuckles right through the head of the bar guest, and it uh, you end up on the ground covered in dust. Oh, lovely day. It's dust. They're just dusty. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't more creatures be like this? <laughs> I think that's going to be my turn. All right. Uh, I'll make an awareness uh, test from everyone, please. Oh, shit. OK. <sighs> How much stamina was that, by the way? Uh, that was a grand total of, I believe it was only one stamina for the additional strike. 
Oh, really? Wow. Any okay. additional mods? Because me and Nienna are like up on top viewing everything. Plus three. Well, Six. then I got a 19. Excellent. Uh, I got a 36. And what are your L5C? You're alive. <laughs> Goddamn. Damn. <laughs> Uh, 23. <laughs> That's well. And then Irolef glances up and sees a bunch of humans sitting around a table. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got another 13. What the hell? Alrighty. With that roll, you all are just looking and looking for any other threats, looking for signs of whatever caused this magic. And you don't see it. What you do see, however, is that a odd fog begins to roll in. Shit. It is a fog that is blatantly magic, given the uh, feeling of it. It is chill and humid. And you can see a light in it, just sort of dancing. Is this a new spell? It is not a spell. I would like a roll of education from those who have it or monster lore or witcher training from those who have it. All right. Witcher training. Oh, uh, can I yell something instead? Go ahead. Uh, bad fight to the vehicles. Let's get out of here. Go. <laughs> Do I have a bonus at all? I'll say you have a plus two from being around a witcher so much. Oh, shit. I rolled a 30. God damn, Sigrun. You know um, what this is. Can I use my nose? Uh, I'll say yeah. Cool. May I, uh, what is it, spend two points of luck to re-roll? <laughs> yeah, you can spend two points of luck to re-roll if you like. Keep rolling sixes and I'm terrified. I need three. I'm gonna sniff yeah, how many it out. Twenty-three. Hit in a row now. Twenty-two. Uh, seven. <laughs> God damn! But I don't know. <laughs> That's Satan twice. I, so, I, yeah. <laughs> Those of you who use utilize your education, you know that this type of fog rolls in whenever someone who has performed something heinous is about to be punished. Whenever a spirit of some call it righteous vengeance comes to collect its toll. The spirit that wields a blade in one hand, a lantern in the other, and wears a sanguine veil across its face. A spirit known as a penitent. Oh, and those of you who rolled monster lore and witcher training know the knows that while many people consider penitence to be some sort of odd righteous demon, they are in fact just really powerful souls and spirits to that come back to punish what is seen as evil or cr or heinous criminal acts. Oh shit! And you, uh, for those of you who know about monsters, you know that. The only way to really get a penitent to die and stay dead is for a fire to be made and the uh, guilty party to stay within the range of that fire to get, disperse the fog long enough for the penitent to be slain. Otherwise, it will just keep coming back. Shit. Or, you know, you can run away. Either works. Someone cast dark magic here. And what am I smelling? Is it just death? Uh, it's 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 mostly death. Also, a little bit yum, of like, yum, uh, yum. embers of a fire. Okay. But with your awareness roll, you hear something. Ah, balls. What was that? <sighs> It's calling it's my sister's name. That's so cool. Okay. It's saying a trillo, her name. That's not great. Am, yeah. am I able to 
figure that as well. <laughs> All right. Say that with your uh, heightened witch witcher senses, you're able to hear it. Okay. It's just like at the edge of your hearing because it's not really meant for you. No, 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 that's all good. I just curious. Yep. Uh, I think hearing that. Um, how many Bargus are on the knights right now? Uh, there are a grand total of five left. There are five Vargas left, uh, two of them on the men-at-arms, and three of them on the pair of knights. Okay. Um. Oh, good, it's my turn. Uh... Fuck me running. Okay. Um. Hearing that, seeing that, uh... How big are the Bargus? The Bargus are the size of pretty much about the, like the size of Mastiffs. They are, but they're more lanky than bulky. Their skin is like almost like stretched across bone. There isn't really a lot of musculature to them. Um, and are they in a group? Uh, they're in a group of uh, three. They are in a trio with the knights and a group of uh, two they're in a group of uh, they're a duo with the uh, men at arms right. I am Phoenix is going to calculate all of these things and he is going to blitz over to the knight and he's going to um, <laughs> he's going to dive body tackle the three of them and try to pin them to the ground while screaming get her out of here you could have tried to essentially squeeze the three of them to death. Okay. I will go ahead and make that a special maneuver for a brawling roll. Mm -hmm. I'll say that since you're trying to get multiple of them, it will take one, two points of stamina, one for one for each additional target, mm -hmm. and a minus three because you're trying to get multiple uh, figures in one go. Mm. All right. Uh, that's going to be 23. Just want to reroll that. I think I will actually. Of course, never mind. 22. You are able to grab them all and just sort of barrel along with them. And your voice tinged by that uh, growling sound and the fact that you have more uh, canine vocals, but still have some ability to speak as a werewolf. Uh, you're able to get that uh, warning out, that call for action out. The... the one of the knights just looks at you in a horrified shock, but uh, Sir Weversham just nods to you and claps uh, his gauntleted hands onto his companion to work to grab uh, Hetrilla and get her to the carriage. Okay. Um, I have plenty of it, but this isn't going to be, this is just another action to prevent them from squirming out on their turn. Um, how many points of stamina do you think it would take for me to just lock my arms and not let them move as a locking action? I would say that you don't really have to spend any stamina, but if I will make rolls for them to try to escape it and you'll have to contest it. Okay, so I'd spend stamina to contest? Uh, you'll spend a point of stamina for each contested roll. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. All right. Off to Oswald. Okay. Hearing this uh, and seeing how this werewolf has <laughs> just tackled three Bargus, I'm, I'm immediately going to go towards the other two to help unharry them. And I'm going uh, before I go over, though, uh, before I go over to them, I'm going to reach over to uh, my belt 
and unclip a potion. I'm going to take a potion of cat. Okay, you are able to just up, pop the potion open and down it, and your eyes sharpen as you're able to more properly see in the uh, dark of the night. Exactly. There were torches that were making this that were making this not an entirely pitch black battle, but well, it was I, also. But, but everyone was still at problematic. If we're going to deal with fog, and if we were going to get the fuck out of here, I want to make sure there's no problems getting out. So, but now yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go over and stabby stab the bar Bargus. Okie dokie. So that would be swordsmanship. Fast strike. Is this another two strikes? I'm making sure. So we'll know. So uh, is this going to will be another two strikes? Yes. Okay, making sure. All right, so we'll go silver, and all right, here we go. Twenty-two and the twenty-three. Right, let me go ahead and roll their defense, and it is nowhere near enough. You're able to go ahead and roll the damage, and I will apply the extra damage for the less complex crits that you, than what you got last time. Location one and location two. Uh, torso and limb. Go ahead and roll the damage. 46. I am. I roll 46 plus two. That's one. That's two. So 16 and 15 on, um, yep, on both, uh, on one and the other, basically. All right. And that is another dead bar guest. Uh, sure. You, there is one last bar guest with the man at arms in the, uh, the dwarven companion to these new uh, associates that you've made. If you would like to go ahead and spend another point of stamina, you can go ahead and do another two quick strikes, or you can just do the uh, quick strike from your uh, Witcher talent. I'm going to be doing the quick strike once again. Okay. And there we go. 27. Yeah, that'll hit. All right. This attack must be made. Yep. And then now I get to make another single strike. So we'll go silver sword. Oh, that's just for damage. I didn't realize it just did that. So sorry. All right. We'll go horsemanship again. Oh, put your and a werewolf walk into a bar guest ambush. <laughs> yep. <laughs> silver. There we go. And there we go. That's going to be 36. <laughs> okay. Oh, then. My. Yep. Flash. Roll. D6. Plus two. Oh, and also, it. this is going to hit the left leg again. Man. Okay. That's going to be 10. Plus the crit damage, so that's. All right. So the damage that you deal to the second one is less substantial, even as you cleave the first one completely in half and it scatters into the dust once again. OK, the other one's down and <clears throat> I'm just like, get her on. W w let's leave. Get out. I'm just going to I'm just going to hold back and defend the vehicle before uh, defend the cart, basically, before to give by them enough time. Okie dokie. Next up is Yenna and Irelith again. Uh, is the smaller spell that is keeping the, the bar guests in the area still here? Or is it like fading as they're killing them? It is fading. Okay. Um, do I have any sense of um, where all the magic-y bullshit is coming from now that I know that uh, the lady is being hunted by whatever the spirit is? You can go ahead and roll me. Uh, let's go ahead and call it magical training. Okay. Uh, do I get a bonus for knowing about the earlier spells? Do. Twenty-five. You reach out and try to take hold of the 
last strands of chaos there that were weaved. You can feel the hatred and the sort of cruel glee in them. And you can reach out and just tell that the source of the magic, the one that weaved it, is moving away deeper into the forest. But you can tell that it is indeed a sorceress or mage. It is someone who weaved this magic. It is not in, in... a beast or a monster's magic. Uh, Iroleth, standing next to you, uh, has planted several silver-tipped arrows in the roof of the carriage and taken a knee for firing position. What do you think, dog or ghost? What's coming is is a spirit. Um, but we're going to keep running into this until we get the one who called all of this here. I just need to shoot something. All right, ghost. Because all the dogs are currently occupied with Phoenix, yes? Phoenix and Oswald and the uh, knights and men, well, the men at arms, the knights are working to get Hetrilla out of there. Oh, uh, we'll start by clearing these men at arms up. I'm going to shoot the first Bargast, fighting the men at arms. Alrighty. Uh, let's do... Are any of them already injured? The last remaining Vargas is hit, was injured by Oswald. Cool. Uh, let's aim for the torso. Plus two for accuracy. 27. And that will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, Remind me how to do that. I can't just click the damage number on my weapon. It's on the front page, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, 29. That is a dead Vargast. All right, Uh, I shall spend some stamina and shoot the next one. Okie dokie. It's two per attack? Uh, One stamina per attack. Cool. Though you will be at a minus three. Yeah. This one is also wounded. Or is it not? Uh, the, this one is very minorly wounded. Then we'll hit it harder. Thirty three. Yeah, hit. Crit. So ten plus. 1727. And that's another dead Bargus. Good. Next. I'm clearing these Bargus right now. That's my plan. All right. All right. You will be at a minus six for this next attack then. Indeed. I would like to mention I'm bear hugging the other three. So yes. Yeah, so the, like one just popped oh, yeah. in your arms. You're like, ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, we're going to go single strikes on these so that if I miss, it's not as bad for Phoenix. Okay. Reach. <laughs> What'd he die? <laughs> You're left <living it. laughs> well, I was aiming for the other one. The shoot the dog thing, because I hit one. Twenty-four, uh, which is actually a twenty-one, because it's only deducting three for the extra attack. Great hits. And eighteen. 
still up, but very injured. All right, and one more. As Irileth is just raining arrows out into the field. This will be at a minus nine. All right. Uh, that's a 17 with the 9. That one will just barely miss, but because of, but because of how much it missed, I will say that it does also not hit uh, Phoenix. Cool. But the comedy hour. <laughs> All right. And then Irileth lets out the breath and uh, takes a minute to, like, recenter after just popping off these arrows um there's an arrow in one of the one of the uh bargus that's not dead yet right correct um would you let me cast cadfin's grasp on the arrow now that it's already in the bargus i'd say yes excellent Twenty-five for the spell casting, and that's an extra nine damage. And that is enough to bring the Bargus low. As the uh, heat just pour- pulses through its frame, and it just becomes dust in Phoenix's arm. And then I immediately end the spell so it doesn't set him on fire. Fair. Again, the comedy though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking to kill you. I'm trying to help. Damn. Set them on fire and get to the arrow. Guys! So we just went from five Bargists to one, and Phoenix has it? No, it's yeah. two. It was, I had three. Right, and I killed one. I hurt one, which Nana finished, and I missed the last one. Uh, I thought... Okay, I misunderstood. I thought Jimmy had only hurt two, not killed one of them, and you killed nah, one. Nah, he had That's killed one. one of them. So yeah, there was only uh, the, of the one left. Excellent. Petrula and her knights are moving towards the carriage with the men-at-arms now that they have been freed up from the bar guests. They are all working to get towards their horses as well. And you see that the horses are getting skittish because of the uh, approaching of the spirit. And as you see one men-at-arm move to hop up onto his horse, you soon see that his legs fall away from where his torso was as you heard steel rend through flesh. Another one works to try to uh, just get away, even running, a, like losing his will and running into the forest before you see that a lantern crashes into his face and his form just erupts into the sickly blue flame. He's not able to get out more than just a brief scream as he dies. And you can see the penitent beginning to take physical form. The red, almost mourning cloth or executioner's hood over its face as it has a bloodied steel sword in one hand and the sickly blue flamed lantern in the other. Okay, well. <laughs> Start plan- panicking. We ain't got a planicking. <laughs> Thankfully, we do. Hydra it's run away. Hydra is able to get into the carriage, and Sigrin, you saw the people that you were working to save from the bar guests. Uh, two of them are dead now, unfortunately. Cool. Wow, that's so epic. Um,. She's going to try to haul the last to his feet and bid him to follow her as she takes render and fucking flees to the cart. Forget the horse, darling. (laughs) 
I will say that you are able to get him to come along. He is in no mood and no real position to argue with you. And as he hops into the cart, you are able to get into the driver's seat and are ready to go. All right. Yeah, let's get this whole thing moving. Phoenix, you have one Bargas left, but you can see the penitent and see that it is focusing on the carriage where your sister now sits. You said these things are like the size of a mastiff, right? Yes. Can I throw a Bargas? You yeah. can absolutely throw a Bargas at a penitent. <laughs> cool. It's no, <laughs> no shit. There I was, a werewolf throwing a bargain at a penitent. Um, uh, yeah, he's going to, um, since it's under his arm right now, he's going to grip uh, the claws of his right hand underneath the bargain's jaw and kind of get it up into its mouth. He's just going to rip open into it um, to get a good grip. Uh, and he is going to. He's gonna throw the Bargas at this fucking thing. It's kind of okay. that's his plan. <laughs> Let's go ahead and call this an athletics roll. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Dope. Yeah, great. Okay. That's plus my own. Uh, that's going to be athletics for total plus body. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and say it's plus. It's the skill plus body. Okay. Um. Oh, it's dexterity. Never mind. Um, base scroll, please. It's going to be at plus eight. I. That's not funny. I think it's fucking hilarious, but that's not funny, man. I really. What? Uh, that's. That's yeah, 38. Um, Already. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that'll hit. And go ahead and roll, to, I don't know, 3d6 plus your uh, melee bo damage bonus, which I think is like four. Mm -hmm. And I'll add the bonus for critting with a Vargas for hitting a motherfucker with another motherfucker. This game is so fucking dumb. <laughs> and crit bonus? I don't know. Should I roll? I'm just, I'll just get. Damn, can I roll for location? Yeah, go ahead. Why not? Sure. It's a ten. Of course it was. Right in the head. Of course it right was. In the head. <laughs> <laughs> fucking got him. What you do? You fucking got him. <laughs> I went for my sister. There's the bargain. The penitent, a spirit of great power and great <laughs> righteousness in its own cause for punishing <laughs> evildoers, gets hit by a flying magical doggo. <laughs> and it just Let's has see. to rethink its existence for a brief moment. <laughs> Given Phoenix time to move to the carriage or the cart if he so chose. Yeah, he's on full defense mode of the carriage. Alrighty. <laughs> uh, Oswald. It's your turn after seeing that. Yeah, I was just like... After I see that, I was like, okay, I'm going to... What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> I think... Uh, I think it's now just time to get onto the cart and uh just everyone's packed up and on there pretty much right yeah everyone is well as packed as they could be in the middle of the yeah. where they just had to abandon yep. ship basically yeah 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 i'm going to uh hopefully help and just uh 
take over the reins and try to brush them out. Okay. I will say with that, everyone having gotten to the cart or the carriage and able to grab on to something or head or head into the carriage to actually skedaddle. Everyone is able to peel out with what few horses are left with their riders. And with that, as you leave the penitent behind and a woman with deep red hair steps out from the forest and just with a wave of her hand dissipates the penitent watching you all leave. We will uh, shoot at her. Wait, can I take a sh could I take a shot at her? Could I? Or We're is this a thing that we don't carriage. see? I will say that you can. You'll be at a severe negative because you're just peeling. You're at minus six. Okay. You said severe. All right. Do you want to take the shot and I'll just make your stuff better? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to see I'm going to see Irales pulling out a pulling out an arrow and I'm going to cast Cadfin's grasp on the arrow. Okay. Let's go medium range. Let's go Uh I'm actually going to go random location. <sighs> Question for me, do I know this is a sorceress? I did Do say I someone was weaving spells. Uh. Cool. Then Irelith, uh reaches into a secret compartment in the side of the quiver and pulls out a, a special arrow. Oh, no. And a minus six, you say? Yes. Have a bad day. That's a 19. The arrow screams across the forest. And you see it impact where she was as she steps through a portal and is gone. <sighs> well, she knows we're not friendly. Well, that could have gone a lot worse. Are we still on top of the cart or on top of the carriage? I would say that you are, but you have been going at full uh, tilt long enough that you think you've gotten enough distance to where you can get to a uh, more manageable speed so that way you can either slip into the ca the uh, carriage's actual like interior or you can hop back to the cart with the rest of your friends and the heavily traumatized band of arms or <laughs> slip in to slip beside Oswald in the driver's seat of the carriage. I'm just imagining Irelith and Nienna like crouched down on the top of the carriage, holding onto the top of it for, for, for dear life. Very much. <laughs> Barreling through the dark. Screaming Irelith or takes not. takes off his longer <laughs> raincoat and like puts it over Nienna's shoulders. Thank you. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to like lay down on the top of the carriage so that I can like hook one arm over the, the front of it to like hold onto the edge and I'm going to like tap Oswald on the shoulder. I think you could slow down now. I will start. <clears throat> OK, uh, t OK, and I'll start uh, moving, uh, reining in the horses a little bit to slow down a little bit. Already so going at a steady trot, but at the same time, uh, until we find another area to possibly camp out. Got it. So which horses do we have with us exactly? Uh, well, your horses were all st still tied to the back of the cart, so they were just being they were just trying along behind. OK, good. Uh, the most of the horses of the uh, retinue with uh, Lady Gersahog were left behind because they didn't have riders anymore. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, I think once we've once we've slowed down enough, Nienna will kind of look over at Irelith. Well, um, we should probably get down at some point. Yeah. Cart? Um, I'd like to speak with the lady, if I'm being honest. 
nods, and he'll help her down into the door and then follow into the carriage. You are able to just sort of like monkey bar your way into the carriage. The knights, even in their full regalia, leave a little bit of room for you, given that this is large enough that uh, Phoenix was not having to completely crunch himself down, but it's still a little cramped. Uh, in the carriage, I'm going to look at Lady Yersahog. The woman we spoke about earlier. Mm. Does she have red hair? How did you know? She'll kind of look at Aerileth because she's the one who summoned all that stuff. I figured. We saw her before she managed to teleport away, though I don't remember seeing that arrow hit a tree. And she'll kind of shrug at Aerileth. Might have followed her through the portal. I've killed someone else without being paid for it. They're going to revoke my damn license. Don't worry, dear. You are getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, you and I fight pretty well for a lady. Was a lady for a time. Then I wasn't. Now I am again. Good. Oh, and uh, Nienna. Hmm? The next time I suggest a full complement of guards, we're doing it. Cool? Very well, although I don't know that guards would have helped us in that situation. leans back. I thank you all for handling yourself so well. And for oh. making sure that my knights were not slain. Hmm. Something we've grown oddly accustomed to. She'll kind of Again, like, she's... She looks a little uncomfortable because she's got your less, like, jacket on over top of her nightgown, but she's still in a nightgown. <laughs> she's, like, just closes it a little bit tighter, tugs the wrists down a little bit more. Unless I'm mistaken, Lady Gearsahog is in a nightgown that's, like, cut open up to her thigh or something. Sure, but she seems a lot less formal uh, <laughs> mm. than Nienna does. True. So, uh, how do you think she found us? Or was she just waiting for the two of you to be together? I doubt she would wait that long. It's not impossible or even particularly difficult to track someone with magic. Well, let's get into this damn town. Hopefully she'll be a little more, uh, cautious. Agreed. She goes quiet, and, uh, Sir Weversham just gently puts a hand on the back of her own. It's a more fam uh, familiar sort of gesture than you've seen him make so far, even though he still hasn't said a single word. Uh, can Sigrun actually uh, talk to the uh, the lone man-at-arms? Absolutely. Hey there, darling. Made it out just in time, it seems. Yeah, but I was the only one. I... I saw my friends brought 
down so easily. Sigrun nods with a sad little smile. She reaches into uh, her jacket, uh, pulling out a flask of uh, dwarven whiskey. She'll uncap it and hold it out to him. Well, this might surprise you, but I know a thing or two about that feeling. Truly. Truly. Does it ever go away? No, but it does get louder. And sometimes when you're with friends and good people, I'll slip to the back for a little while. He thinks on that for a second before taking the uh, flask. It was easier when it was people. People I can figure out. Just seeing those things bite and claw and set them on fire. But why? And then he just takes a very hefty swig before passing the flask back and just le uh, leaning back against the cart. And he just looks to Phoenix and he just sort of like bu uh, bunches up a little bit, trying to get away, get as much of his body away from Phoenix uh, as possible, having seen him as a werewolf and then shifting back into a human form. Yeah, I don't... Phoenix doesn't really seem to notice. He's kind of uh, crouched in the back of the cart and he's watching the road as that they're leaving behind. Um, I think you can still see like the gold glint in his eyes still. It hasn't left. It's a lot stronger than it was before. What's your name, good sir? Talon. Talon? Yeah. That's good to finally make your acquaintance. I'm Sigrin. And this might come a little bit odd, but I might have a thing or two to teach you about wrestling beasties like those. Could, could we maybe... Okay, another time I am currently yes, sorry of your fuzzy friend oh he's a good friend of mine believe me I know he seems a little pants shittingly scary um, but he really is a sweetheart uh, we'll take your word for now I think I should and then he just sort of like collapse back with the exhaustion from the fight and the emotional weight and the booze like just against the cart she reaches over and plucks the flask back recapping it now that is a certified Sigrun classic right there <laughs> Phoenix mm-hmm could you please give me a roll of, let's call it a roll of intelligence. Oh. <laughs> come on, this book. Come on, man. You're smart. You got this, my guy. Um, I got a two. The scent that was left behind because you were able to see you were like you even got uh, a brief whiff of the scent of the individual that stepped out after you all were leaving full tilt it is the scent of gardenia it is a very floral perfume that reminds you of bloodshed and flames it's the same kind of perfume that was worn by her. Mm. 
you are very easily able to come to the conclusion that this entire thing, all of this bloodshed, this ambush was caused by Tricia of Merivale, who you heard was supposed to be in Sintra, though with sorceresses and their ability to create portals, they can be wherever they wish, it seems. Yeah. Um, you know what? I feel really sorry for that man at arms behind me, but I'm pretty sure uh, uh, subconsciously he's kind of struggling not to transform back. Um, and I think you kind of see his form. If Sigurd ever looks behind her to like at the card to see what's going on, it looks like his body is kind of like shifting between what it wants to do. So you can feel like muscle and sinew and bones moving. Um, but he doesn't realize it at the time. And uh, he's just staring at the road as they're leaving. Sigrun will reach over and gently put a shoulder, uh, put, put a hand on his shoulder, much in the same way that she once did when he was losing control. Are you driving the cart? Am I driving the cart? Who's driving? Yeah. <laughs> Who's driving, driving this cart anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Friend Derp's up there with the thing in his jaws. <laughs> you know what? I, I... <laughs> oh that was a super serious moment. Um, who's driving? <laughs> Just look at your feet render with the reins in his jaws. You know, I think Victory would be completely okay with that. <laughs> Used to be an around wolf. Um, okay, dog's driving. Got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be totally fair, uh, horses are also herd animals, so when it saw the ones pulling the carriage take off, it would. It, it's not unlikely that it would have followed. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. Uh, Victor's a smart girl. Um, then, uh, good. <laughs> scene. Um, I, he doesn't notice. If anything, your hand feels like it's touching a hot stove. She'll resist pulling away and instead kind of get to his side and lean up more against him just so T feels some presence. Yeah, I think after a few moments it stops and he starts to cool down. Feeling a little better? You ever see your nightmares walk out of the woods? Um, once or twice. Probably just the once. I'm guessing that one was yours. Yeah. Well, whoever they are, I assure you, they will be dealt with in due time. Be fucked up. Maybe. Maybe we fucked up spectacularly, but we are alive. And hopefully alive long enough to learn. You should probably take the reins from your dog. Huh? Oh shit, <laughs> she'll actually go over and take the reins back. Thank you, Render. <clears throat> Good boy. Yes, I definitely taught you that. As to know, Render was actually not really driving. He was more just pulling along it just playfully. 
and just pulling <laughs> up the reins. That's oh why he was like, you, know, you probably should take the reins from this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now that Sigrun's gone, he'll go back to concentrating on the road. Alrighty. Does anyone else have anything they would like to bring up to Lady Gersahog or to Oswald? Um. No. Not right now. Uh, your left is in. He doesn't trust Lady Gersahog enough to risk giving anything away, and he's not letting Nienna out of arm's reach until they are very, very safe. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say I, I I'm thinking Nienna is probably sitting right next to your ear left. Um mm -hmm. and I think after a while, like just the exhaustion of traveling all day and then getting into a big fight and having to expend so much stamina all at once starts to kind of pull on her and she'll just uh let her head rest on his shoulder start to drift off. Okay. You all managed to make it to the outer gates of the city of Viraleva. And with Oswald able to show a uh, identification as to who he and the others within his group are, you're able to actually head on inside and to a proper inn. Irelith, are you going to wake Nian, or are you just going to carry her to a proper bed now that you're able to actually be in a city? Uh, if at all possible, I will carry her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll say that given the amount of stamina that she had to expend all at once, she's probably s sound enough asleep that you don't have to worry about waking her. Unless you, like, drop her. I don't. So you are able to all get to your various rooms. Uh, Venus will actually cut off Atrilla before she can get to her room. She was actually moving to you with purpose as well. What are the odds? Uh... <sighs> um, you'll just walk up and Uh, like a gesture, like slowly, like to like uh, pointing at um her knight and her. How many times? Hmm. How many times did she come for you? Twice. I suppose it's only fair. I came for her just as many. You. I wasn't just going to let this go, Phoenixes. We all stayed away, so it's... <clears throat> and that was your decision, too. Mine was to work to kill the bitch. Right. I'm not going to begrudge you whatever you had to do to stay alive. But we did everything we could to make sure she never found you. And I appreciate that. And I understand that. But she killed our family, Phoenixus. I understand you wanted me to be safe, but I wanted her to be dead. And I wanted you to carry on the legacy that we had left. I still can, once I watch the light leave her eyes. You've done enough. 
He's still breathing, so no, I haven't. Extinguish your last breath is my job. Make sure our family name keeps breathing as yours. And you've done an amazing job of it so far. I'm not saying you can't handle yourself, but I'm not going to say you don't have a strength I don't have. I couldn't be more fucking proud of to seeing the person I am before right now. But you need to drop this. And let me handle it. Up until about three months ago, she didn't even know I was alive. I have things in play, things she can't see. You're in full view. I don't plan on using you as bait. But there's not a movie you you are going to make that she's not going to be able to see. She knows you. She's been watching you. The last thing she ever expected is to handle another one of us, a full-grown fucking werewolf. Just remember, father thought much of the same. Father invited her in our home with the pretense of having someone that's willing to help him change this empire. We dined with her. She gave us toys. You brought your hair. Get a chess game with me. I still remember her laughing in our gazebo at the stupid jokes everyone was telling. He entered that house as a friend. Father didn't see this coming. I have both eyes open. All I am asking you to do is do everything in your power to keep our last name alive. I do everything in mind to make sure she never sees the light of day. Phoenix? Mm -hmm. Give me a roll of charisma with a plus four. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's <laughs> not persuasion. <laughs> Damn. All right. Let's see how we do. Oh, hey. Okay. Uh, 22. He looks at you for several long, quiet moments before just. <sighs> Fine. I'll leave her to you then. Can I tell you a truth? Always. A few years after we all got separated. Uh, they get into a fight pit. They kept me in silver chains for about 10 years. That's how our witcher found me. That's how I spent my childhood. You know, the only thing that allowed me to not lose myself to the wolf. It was the knowledge that you were still there, out there. That you would carry on our family's legacy if I didn't get out or. <laughs> I'm not saying we have to rule by the Emperor's side anymore. I don't give a fuck what we do for this goddamn empire. But Hitchell, you look so much like mom now. You realize that, right? 
That... That means more to me than anything. Can I tell you a truth? Always. I did not do or have to do what you did. I was never in silver chains. I never felt that call. It seems that gift did not come to me. But with Sir Weversham, we were... It was not pleasant. We had to go from being a noble, a noble knight and his ward to a bodyguard for, for a rather important thief. One who had to learn what was the right thing to pick up. Who was the right mark? Who is the right person to slip a blade in the ribs of? I had to do horrible things to even have a legacy to leave, brother. It is no accident that I am now the new Lady Gersahov. Maybe a legacy isn't worth it if that's what we have to do to keep it. We did to keep it afloat. What we do with our legacy in the future that matters. Do we just forget the bodies under the floorboards? The blood washed from our hands? No. But we make it worth it. I don't know what you have planned for your future. I don't know why you're coming to this city. I don't know what you've done to the cities that you've left behind. Let our family name live. What your children do after that. That's on them. He's quiet for a few moments before she just pipes up a spit. Very well. Good night, Phoenixus. Can I roll something real quick? What do you want to roll? Um. I want to kind of, I'm not in werewolf form right now. You are not. But he kind of want to, I kind of, he want to, I want him to dig into his animal senses. I want to see if I feel any magic coming off of her of any sort. Okay, I would say that that would, could be a awareness roll. Okay. You don't feel any of that magic you don't feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand up kind of as your usual sense of uh telling when something's weird just seems that she's kind of melancholy and tired good night sister 
and she will head off. Sir Weversham stays behind and looks to you, offering a arm silently. Yeah, it's actually just going to pull him into a hug. The knight will hesitate for a few moments before hugging you back and uh, breathing rather heavily as you can as he seems to be trying to fight back uh, emotion. Thank you, uncle. He smiles when the hug parts and uh, lo looks like he opens his mouth to say something, but then just closes it and nods. Uh, and with your awareness and with how close you are, you can see that he would not have been able to say much anyway. Yeah. His tongue is missing. Oh. But he nods, clasps your arm again, and then will depart to his own quarters. Okay. Irelith. Mm hmm. You have gotten Nina settled down into her bed, into your, uh, the bed you two will share for the evening. Mm hmm. And you see that she has kept on of all the jewelry and everything that she normally wears just to sort of keep up the appearance of the noble lady. One thing that she's actually kept on even within her nightgown is the silver bracelet that was brought up by uh, Lady Gearsahog. Hmm. And you notice that there is a slight miscoloring to her uh, wrists. Like, it almost looks like a small bit of spider webbing out with blackish bluish veins on her wrist. Uh, that's weird. Can I remove it? You reach out to touch it and you can see that it, it almost feels like it's less just like clasped on normally like jewelry and almost more like clamped on almost almost close to a manacle. Can I tell why there's a rash? You have probably had to deal with this enough, or at least learned enough of it ahead of time. This looks like a rash caused by Dematerium. Hmm. Takes a seat. Huh. I think he's going to get up and do a couple of the things. Uh, lean something on the door so that if anyone opens it, like a broom will fall and make a noise. Make sure the windows are securely latched. Uh, hide a knife under the bed on his side and in the nightstand and behind a chair. Regular knives or silver knives? Uh, the silver knife is staying strapped to the, like, outside leg. Got it. Like, down on his calf. Uh, he's also boots right by the bed. I think pants on. Not the most comfortable, but... At this point, I have more reason to assume that there will be trouble in the night, then I have reason to assume that we are safe. Fair enough. (sighs) 
and then he's going to get up, pace for a second, and go knock on Sigrun's door. Oh boy. <laughs> yes, hello. Can I come in? Yes, uh, the, the door is unlocked this time around. Enters. Ah, uh, she is actually uh, fully clothed this time around for a change. <laughs> <laughs> He's throwing oh. a jacket on. Aerith. Mm, what do I have the pleasure? Taps his foot for a minute. I don't, I don't know enough about this place. I don't know who might come after us here, other than everyone, apparently. That's a fair point. Let me see if I can dig something around my noggin and knock something loose. And I am going to go ahead and use... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to use Well Traveled and see what I can learn about our upcoming town. Or the town that we're currently at. <laughs> Whichever is important to your life right now. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and roll it. Roll it. 22. Okay. You know that Viraleda is a town that's big for its blacksmithing, especially for its uh, making of swords, given the special sword fighting style that is popular here for people trying to uh, work to prepare themselves for fighting multiple opponents. You know that this town is pretty well policed and kept fairly quiet. But of course, it, given that it's a city, it's still going to have its own share of like criminal uh, activities. Not too much in terms of monsters, from what you've heard. Maybe the occasional uh, drowner attack. But for the most part, this place seems fairly safe. And though, of course, the keep also seemed safe. Well, uh, she'll go ahead and uh, divulge all of that. And while in theory it is far less monster heavy, I believe we also thought of that of a lovely keep. So my own guess is as good as mine if we're going to be pursued by even more random and or not so random beasties. Thank you. No problem. Good news is, though, uh, it does have that sword skill thing that you were interested in. Yeah. Yeah, maybe after we deal with our business, I can find some kind of teacher. Or I'll just keep going with the Witcher. Thank Are you, you feeling mm -hmm. all right, Irlith? No. I mean... A little better than when we were exhausted back in Rakina, but I feel like an idiot for letting us leave without guards. I knew wow. back then that that we were in trouble. Someone was coming after us, even if it was for Phoenix or Nienna or Brunhilde. I mean, say. There's if half any... a dozen northern lines who would probably like to put a knife in my side. Well, uh, think about it like this, right? Frankly, I think you're smarter for having left them behind. I mean, we saw what they did to the Gearsahog guards. I yeah. don't think ours really would have fared much better. And frankly, we need them in a position where they're actually alive, for the most part. If we hadn't met Lady Gearsahog, it would have just been us against those dogs. And then it would be one of us dead, and not a couple of men whose job it is to die so that their lady can get away. I think that's a little bit of a grim way of looking at it, but I suppose you have 
some truth to the matter. Either way, we lived. And I believe that really is the important part. We're still holding our own for the most part. Yeah. I just... I feel like I've left too much to chance. And it does not sit well with me. Try not to dwell on it, dear Aleth. After all, you do happen to be shagging the one person that can constrain that chance for the most part. Yeah, including a number of other things, but we won't get into that. Mm, that brings a smile to him. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks. You're welcome, Erleth. I'm always here if you need an ear. Yeah. And I've got your back. But next time, just let us be late. <laughs> okay. I will certainly try, just as I will also try to make sure they don't walk in on you with your pants down. Mm. Sleep well. You too, Irelith. And then he'll go to bed. Alrighty. What is Oswald up to? Um, most likely Oswald is... Just most likely keep an eye on the cart and um, just still most likely outside. Just just wants to be outside compared to then don't really care much for ends. You hear the telltale steps of someone coming up behind you. There are lighter steps that you recognize as being uh, Lady Gersahog. Okay. I turn and uh, Lady Gersahog, it's uh, what brings you out here this night? I wanted to speak with you on something. Oh. The group we traveled with. I assume that you were able to put two and two together and see the resemblance between myself and their smith. Very much so. Then you understand that he is important to me. I do. Then you will also understand why I give you this charge. While they are within Viroleda, we will be within Viroleda. And while they have business, you are to protect him and his. Okay. Can do that. Good. I get the feeling that they will have need of your assistance with whatever it is that brings them here. I can handle myself, and my knights can assist me with going to see our carpentry business. Which you personally know is, is in fact an actual carpentry business, business but it's also a uh, shipping front for a number of illicit substances. Yeah, that's fair. That sounds good. Yeah, I will... I'll keep my eye on him. Good man. When their business is done, you can, of course, come find us. We will be at the Carpenters. All right. I'll meet you at the Carpenters then. Good. And Oswald. Yes. Be careful. I will be. She gives you a small smile and then will nod. And a good night to you, Vatk, uh, Sir Vatka. Thank you. And you will retire to bed for the evening. 
I would like a resist coercion roll from everyone except for Oswald. Ah, shit, dude. Uh, Nienna's fine. <laughs> I rolled, I rolled a ten, which exploded into another ten, which oh. rolled a nine. I have forty-four oh, total. No. Oh, Irolith. Uh, oh, baby. Oh man, are we doing this shit again? Oh, oh, oh no. That's, That's okay, guys. I've got this. Oh, hey, damn, I do got this. Yo, 214, the boys got this. You ain't got shit on us. We're so dead. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's see. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, Overthinker rerolled that, too. I am, too, honestly. I wanted to see that play I mean, out. I'm glad because I'm in the same bed. And last time that happened, it went poorly. But, um... Man, I really hope I don't wolf out here. That'd be bad. <laughs> That'd be bad. All right. So, first off, Sigrin. You're yeah. fine. You wake up the next day feeling refreshed. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> You refresh. <laughs> yeah, no. You also wake up absolutely fine. Okay. Irileth. Your eyes open and you are in darkness. You see no one else, but you feel a presence all around you. You can hear various voices in language in various languages, Redanian mostly. And you hear murderer, 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 murderer. And it's just a cacophony of voices calling you that. But you're used to that. You take life for a living. But you hear Mira and Jack. Liar. 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 And you see Mira, her throat cut open, blood pouring down the dress that you last saw her alive in. You lied to me. You said I would be safe. And then you lied to my boy. He said he'd see me again. What is truth to you, Irileth? OT, you there? I... Yeah, I'm here. Okay. You want truth? You want some truth? Survive. I did. You didn't. I regret it. But he's not dead. And then you turn and you see Jack looking a bit older than he actually is now, looking like he's growing strong. You failed us. I respected you and you lied to me and you let my mother die.
Yeah. So what are you going to do about it? And you see a blade in his hand and he just lunges after you. Your limbs feel stiff. You feel sluggish. And you see his gift taking pe- uh, hold as he is quick to disarm you. And then with even Your a trend, doesn't move. Ah. He still takes the blade from your the training blade from your hand and just begins to wail at you with a blunted training blade. Each hit stings and leaves large welts, cuts from a blunted blade. I'm going to kill you one of these days, you bastard. Uh, As he speaks, I move forward, take the blade, and push him. Say, good. But you'll need to be better than that. You want your revenge. You come and get it, and you don't fuck it up. Because I'll kill you. You get one shot at me. That's it. That's all we ever get. You think this is right? You think I deserve it? Then make it count. If they don't get to you first. And then he, his face breaks out into a wide, unnaturally cruel grin. And you feel hands pulling at your leggings. You look down and you can see bloated corpses of Redanian soldiers of men and women that you take that have been contracts for you working to reach out and grab at you <laughs> they didn't they had one life and they didn't keep it i flip him off you flip him off even as you feel yourself being pulled down into the muck and you wake up feeling those hands on you and your body still sore and stiff and you are at half of your total stamina phoenix yeah you are awake you think you're sitting at a dining table with your sister and you can see her husband and her children they are wearing the gears of hog colors and you are wearing attire fit for a nobleman your sister just smiles to you is there something wrong phoenixus No, it's just it's been a long time since I've been surrounded by family. She just smiles at you. Well, with things calming down, it won't have to be so rare an occasion. And she reaches and grasps your hand and just gives it a uh, gentle squeeze. The nobleman Gears of Hog looks fairly nondescript just like any other nobleman you'd see at a ball. Well, I I personally have been very excited to get to know my brother-in-law. I hear you're a craftsman. Good with your hands, as it were. Yeah, I've, uh... I've gotten fairly good over the years. Might be making, uh... few pieces of weaponry for all the little kids running around when they get old enough. I think that's a wonderful idea. I especially think that given today's day and age with what few monsters are left about, it's good for people to practice with steel and silver, not just the witchers. To leave it to them, I think, is antiquated, don't you? 
I think they should always be professionals to handle jobs like that, but it's a good idea to arm the citizenry to prepare for the worst. That's true. Oh, exactly. I don't want to take away their profession, but I also don't want to make it so that everyone else is woefully left, well, shit out of luck, as it were. The night is dark and full of terrors, so I understand. And uh, yeah. I'll do my best to make sure to guard against it, I suppose. I'll drink to that. And he raises his glass and your sister raises hers as the kids run off into a different room, just playing. Hey, I'll raise his glass. And you go in for a cheers and you see that there is a fourth glass. And looking at the hand, it is a well manicured, well groomed hand. And you look to the arm and see a beautiful elven woman with a deep red hair looking at you with a sultry and arrogant grin. Tricia of Miravel. Hello, Phoenixus. And you see uh, your brother-in-law goes to take a drink and then you immediately see him drop the cup and begin grasping at his throat as the fluid that he tries to spit out refuses to leave his mouth and forces his way back in and stays in his esophagus. It refuses to go down, it refuses to go up. It just stays there. Hello, Butcher. Such an brass and bass title. But you I enjoy it. it. Oh, only a bit. You can see your sister uh, standing and she has a hand behind her, the frills of her dress. And you, with your keener senses, can hear a wrist sheath. Uh, unclasp and a, a knife slide from it. Don't sister. Yes, do sit down and then you can hear your sister begin just fall to the floor and just you can see the floor begin to crack around her as she is being forced and held down with magic. And before you can even move, you feel her hand on your collar and you feel this shock of cold, this crystalline crackling across your skin and into your muscles and even down into your bone. You can even feel your bone marrow freezing. Listen to me well, Mutt. I will purge every trace of your tainted bloodline from these lands. Every cursed being, every one of you, will know the, their end by my hand. Butcher. My name is Phenexus Alums Cordova, and no amount of chill or threat will stop the reed that has continued in my bloodline for thousands of years. Um, and he will start to transform and um, naturally begin to resist magic. We are werewolves. We are predators. And our eyes are set on you. Be gone. Um, 
I don't know what to roll for that, but uh, I don't think uh, I... You can go ahead and start with a resist magic roll. Cool. Um, doop -a -doop -a -doo. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't great when he says the human. Um. You feel your body resist some of the magic, but you still feel sluggish and can feel it continuing to creep along you, but just slower. And as you would swipe at where she was, you see that she is instead kneeling by your sister. Her, her husband just on the ground, face purple, bloated, drowned. You are a werewolf, that is true. You resist some of my magics. You make it quite hard to watch you die. And then she just takes the blade from your sister's hand, but your sister isn't. And as you lunge at her, she draws the blade across her throat and you wake up just slamming into the wall of your inn room. Yeah. I won't let it. I won't let it happen. It happened. It won't. Um. Uh. And I think you. I think I'd like you to please roll me one d ten plus your willpower. Um, do, 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 would I take the minus five that comes from being a werewolf or, well, here's a question. Um, if he's giving into the wolf a little bit, would I activate the minus five that comes with that? I would say that because you haven't fully shifted in. Mm -hmm. you, would, you would just be at a minus three. I so that's going to be. Oh, no, math 13. <laughs> Help math. OK, you can feel that rage in you and it is hard to stamp down. But you are able to keep yourself in control. The wolf is howling, wanting blood wanting vengeance but you're able to keep it contained if you so choose um like a coin uh yeah he'll keep it contained but he hasn't been quiet he's slamming his fists into the wall um all right just I won't let it. I won't let it. And just pounding his fists into the wall. Which I think that everyone else was able to wake up and hear. Uh, just happening, even like step down the hall, the sheer power with which he's slamming his fists into the wall is able to be heard basically throughout the entirety of the inn. Rip. Uh, Irlith dashes in with a knife in each hand. Uh, Sigrin will also uh, stumble in. Nienna uh, will follow. Phoenix! I won't let it! I won't let it! Oh, Phoenix, darling, calm down. It's us. Yeah, he's uh, back to the like the three of you, and you see him just probably punching a hole through this wall. Uh, she'll she'll go up from behind and gently place a hand on 
uh, his forearm, not not really restraining him or trying to get him to stop, but just letting him feel that presence again. I think that would be a roll, home to home slice. I'm not gonna. I'm thinking there be a. I think that might be a charisma roll. Mm-hmm. Okay. Airlock is going to move up to arm's reach in case this results in violence, so he can try to deep sigh, wrestle Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Breathing. A lot of wrestling. No, a little wrestling. Easy there, darling. Uh, Nina's deac- deactivating her bracelet. Just Smart. in case. Fair enough. You see that, darling? Sun's getting low. <laughs> and I would say if you want to, you can resist coercion, Grizz. Oh. Uh. No, I might succeed, so that would really suck. Um, no, nah, I don't think he's in the mental state to resist it. Uh, um, and so it's like a final, like, like it's through the wall a little bit. You see, like, the board just bends slightly, like it's about to go through. You just see him stop. In my head. Yeah, man, that's that's why we're here. It's the Stop. Heim, Phoenix. Butter. Uh, Irlet walks up next to him and, like, puts his back on the wall so he can look Phoenix in the eye and says, None of us will, man. Yeah, he like turns his head, and you just you are looking into the eyes of like the wolf for the first time, and I think you see this. Uh, I think you see like one eye is like glowing gold, and the other one is his eyes is normal brown. Yeah. None of us are gonna let her. Oswald. Yes. I think you would have been able to hear this entire ruckus and make your way to see yep. just what exactly is uh, going on and hear the way that this group, this odd ragtag bunch, come together almost akin to a family. When I was getting up here, did I hear about what they said was causing it about the Heim. Yep. What'd you say? I would definitely say that you're able to hear talk of a Heim. I mean, when I hear talk of that, I'll be leaning up against the door for him. like, what is this about a Heim? I really am quite tired of people not respecting closed doors. Business, Witcher. Wouldn't make it. <laughs> well, it's more of my business when it involves a monster. So tell me, what is going on? It's your business when it involves a monster. Hey. Phoenix, Easy, buddy. I'm talking about you. Put the claws away. He's talking about the Heim, darling. You, you're all right. We already have a witcher. We already have a witcher, Oswald. Could you repeat that, BP? Uh, Deanna, sorry. We already have a witcher on payroll. She'll be meeting us soon. Okay. Thought you would have liked a little mo- more help, but I'll be all right. I appreciate it, Oswald. 
Uh, once she shows up, we'll have a discussion about whether or not we need a second. But until then, um, I think our friend needs some privacy. Uh, in the meantime, I believe I should probably step out and uh, ease the uh, innkeep. So I'll be off to do that real quick before returning to bed. It's... Late enough in the morning, we should probably just be up. Why don't you arrange breakfast? Sure, I can do that. Thank you, dear. Of course. Damn, it is. And uh, Sigrin will scuttle off. All right. Uh, Sigrin, give me a roll of charisma. Absolutely. Charisma. Mm. I almost kind of want to re-roll that. Just a little. How much luck would that be to re-roll that? You would have struck the building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to want to re-roll that. <laughs> uh, all right. Two points then. Here we go. Try that again. Well, that's marginally better. I'll take that. I'll take a 15. You're able to get the uh, innkeeper settled down even after he was uh, beginning to raise a fuss at you for your party not keeping it down in the early in the morning. And I'm uh, also so... reminding you that uh, if anything is broken, you're paying for it. I'm so absolutely sorry, Inkeep. He fucks like a boar and sounds like one to really have to forgive him. I honestly believe for the first time since you've known him, you've seen that you see Phoenix blush and like scratch the back of his head. <laughs> She's downstairs talking to the innkeep, and we're upstairs. I think we went with him. I right? we went with her. Like it's not. <laughs> yeah, he went with her. Like, to also apologize. He just like looks at at Sigrun and looks at Phoenix and looks at Sigrun. Never seen a couple that needed a fucking ladder and just goes back to cleaning the bar. Oh, not when I pit him down, darling. And she'll like pat, pat <laughs> Phoenix's hip. I need a drink. He immediately starts pouring you and himself a drink. And I think with that, we are going to go ahead and... Uh,